soon. Sorry, it was on me. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Cameron Hager with Consensus Building Institute. And here are just some Zoom tech reminders. Um, if you're not familiar with Zoom, on the bottom left hand corner, you'll find your mute and unmute buttons at the little microphone. And to turn your video on and off, it's where it says start video, where the camera is. Um, if you need to chat uh, one of the hosts or co hosts, you'll see the little button button that says chat, you click on that and opens and on the right hand side will be to where to direct your chat. Under the reactions tab, which will be important for later on uh, when you're able to submit public comment, uh, you'll want to click on that and click your raise hand function. And finally, if you need to rename yourself uh, in the top right hand corner, if you click your name, you can change it to your first and last name. If you have any questions, feel free to chat me or email me as indicated on the slide. Thank you. Great, Cameron. Thank you. And just and we'll go through this again too. But just to know the chat is strictly for kind of technical assistance, support if you need it, and the chat goes just to the co-hosts and primarily to Cameron. So if you have any technical issues, certainly you can you can chat him. If you can't find the raise hand function and want to make a public comment, you can also just let us know in chat, and we'll make sure we get you in the in the queue as well. Um, so here is our agenda for um, uh, for the hearings. Um, so we'll do this quick opening, obviously, and going through the agenda today. Again, we're a little bit of setting the stage from New Jersey DEP from Jennifer, just opening remarks and a broad project overview um, to get things started. I will then kind of just walk through the procedures for today and, and all of the hearings in terms of process and ground rules. And then really the really the most of the full time here is dedicated to you all uh, having an opportunity to make public comment, which we will go um, as long as we need to to get through this. Um, we have up to three hours scheduled. If it doesn't go that long, it doesn't go that long. If it needs to, it will. Um, and then we'll turn to some closing remarks from Jennifer before we wrap this morning. So pretty straightforward agenda, I think. Um, and with that, I'd like to turn that over to New Jersey DEP to really kind of set the stage before we come back to kind of um, the, the, the process for the public comment. So over to you. Okay. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Moriarty. I'm the director of the Division of Land Resource Protection at the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Today, we're providing an opportunity for public comment on the Coastal Area Facility Review Act, or CAFRA, Individual Permit, Waterfront Development Individual Permit, Coastal Wetlands Permit, Freshwater Wetlands Individual Permit, and Flood, flood Hazard Area Verification Application for Orsted's Ocean Wind One Project which proposes the construction of nearshore and onshore components associated with the development of a commercial scale offshore wind energy facility within lease area OCS-0498 off the coast of New Jersey. The project proposal includes up to 98 wind turbine generators, inter-array cables, up to three offshore substations, two onshore substations, and two transmission cables making landfall in Ocean County, New Jersey, and Cape May County, New Jersey. The project will be located in Berkeley, Ocean, and Lacey Townships within Ocean County, and in Ocean City and Upper Township within Cape May County. The project would contribute to New Jersey's goal of 11 gigawatts of offshore wind energy generation by 2040, as outlined in New Jersey's Governor's Executive Order Number 307, issued on September 21st, 2022. Further, the project is intended to fulfill the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities September 30, September 20th, 2018 solicitation for 1,100 megawatts of offshore wind that was awarded to Ocean Wind via the New Jersey BPU on June 21st, 2019. Cam, if you could uh, switch to the um, slide showing the project, yeah. So this slide depicts the location of the various components of the project that I just described. Um, and there's a legend at the top left, which identifies each component for your reference. The permit application is currently under review by the department to determine the project's compliance with the applicable state land use regulations, including the coastal zone management rules at NJAC 7 colon 7, the Freshwater Wetlands Protection Act rules at NJAC 7 colon 7A, the Flood Hazard Area Control Act rules at NJAC 7 colon 13, and the stormwater management rules at NJAC 7 colon 8. The hearing today is an opportunity for the department to obtain supplemental information from the public on this permit application as it relates to the above referenced regulations. As such, no decision has yet been made regarding this permit application. 
The department will not be responding to comments or questions today. The legal and technical complexity of the issues raised and our need to allow time to all who wish to comment make it impractical to answer questions or respond to comments in this forum. However, department staff will be listening closely to your comments and will consider all comments and questions in its review of the permit application. Where your concerns or comments are not clear to us, we may ask for clarification so that we can best consider your comments as we review the application. We appreciate you taking the time to attend this hearing. Please focus your comments on this project as only relevant comments will be considered in our review process. Um, and with that, Patrick Field from the Consensus Building Institute, who's assisting the department in facilitating, will discuss some of the procedural aspects and the ground rules of the hearing. Great, Jennifer, thanks so much. Um, okay, so look kind of you know, uh, rules of the road for our hearing today. So uh, we wanna make sure everyone who joined this morning who wishes to have an opportunity to speak um, has an opportunity to do so. Um, and so in, in the public hearing, you know, the way to make comments is obviously verbally. Um, if you wanna make a comment as well, you can certainly do that in writing. We'll cover this at the end, but written comments will be you know, generally encouraged to be received by the end of this year, really roughly 15 days after the, the in-person public hearing next week. But we'll go through that again. So you can again comment verbally today or in writing later as you see fit. Again, the chat's only for kind of technical assistance, so it's not a form to comment, just to let you all know. Um, if you do want to comment, um, just you know, put, raise your hand in chat. Uh, we'll kind of treat it as a first come, first serve in terms of that. And Zoom does a decent job of kind of keeping order. And I'll just remind people, you know, Bob's up, Sue's next, just to kind of sort of, you know, who's in the queue. Um, the um, What we do want to do as we start, if there are any public officials present before we get going, we do want to give them first the opportunity to speak. So in a second here, when we get started, I will do that in case there are any state or local elected officials, whether that's, you know, council people, mayors, state rep, state senators, et cetera. So um, we'll check on that in just a little bit. Um, in order to kind of be consistent across hearings and kind of fair to everybody, uh, again, we're going to ask that people limit their comments to three minutes. I'll explain our timer in just a second about how that's going to work. Um, if we get through, if everyone has made, who wanted to make a comment has made their three minute comment and we have time, if people want, we can certainly give a second opportunity if there's time to do so. Um, when um, I do call on you to speak, a few things, of course, unmute your mic, which would be helpful. And if you could just state your name, though it's in the Zoom box, it's helpful to hear verbally also for the recording um, and any affiliation if you have one as well. Um, again, if you're a phone number, just a few notes. Um, if you're on the phone, star six will mute and unmute your phone if you're just calling in. If you've got the Zoom app on your phone, you've got to scroll to the first screen to tap and untap mute. And then star nine will raise your hand if you're just on the phone. And if you're on the Zoom app on your phone, you know, it's a little easier to find. You have to kind of look for it, but you can find the raise hand function as well. Um, again, as noted, the chat uh, for this meeting is only for technical assistance help. Um, so do let us know if there's any challenges with kind of managing Zoom or hearing or you want to talk or whatever, but we won't be responding to anything other than technical questions. And it's also not a forum to comment. So people want to, if you want to comment today, make sure you do comment verbally. Um, next slide. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So Cam will explain this in just a second, but we, we want to kind of just, you know, we will certainly let you know when it's your time's up, but we, we do have a zoomer that will put a, a time, a zoom box timer, sorry, that we will put in a box and explain to you how to pin that in a bit so you can see it. So everyone can fairly see that we're being fair and keeping everybody to their three minutes and you can see the clock. We'll describe how to pin that in just a second. Um, as Jennifer noted, the department's not in a responsive mode today. So they are listening uh, we're doing a Zoom recording. There's a, a you know detailed notes being taken, uh, but the DP won't be responding today to the comments. But any comments you know specific to this project certainly will be commented um, you know through the process as we go forward. Um, and you know if the project proponent is on, I don't know if they are um, or stead, they will have no role in the hearing today. Um, and they will other, otherwise be listening as well and would not be responding as well. But they they have really no role. This is really the state's hearing today. Um, next slide. Um, um, Cam, do you want to kind of explain the the pinning the timer piece? Yes, yeah, sure thing, Pat. Um, so as Pat said, we have this timer that we're going to be using today to keep track of three minutes of the public hearing. So if you were to go to uh, your Zoom participant box where there are all the video screens, you'll see a thing that says blue sky timer. And on the blue sky timer, if you were to scroll over the video and click on the little blue box with the three dots, if you click on that and click pin, it'll bring it to the top of your video screen. 
that way, when you start speaking, you'll be able to see the timer right at three minutes and everybody else will be able to see as such as well. If you have any issues with that, please let me know. Great. And Cam, let's just, let me just leave that up for a minute for people to look at because it can be a little confusing. Uh, and again, we'll, you know, once the clock you know, reaches, you know, gets its three minutes, we'll kind of uh, you know, respectfully interrupt and then ask you to, to close and, and, but, you know, the timer will be there to help everybody. So, okay, great. Thanks, Cam. Next slide. Okay. Um, Again, the, these are these are standard um, for meetings, so no, this will surprise no one. I mean, we do want to give everyone the opportunity to comment. So when the person who's called on to speak, if people could, you know, listen, make sure you're on mute um, and allow them their opportunity to speak and express their views, that would be really important to us. Um, ask that people not interrupt. We ask that people be civil. Um, certainly, you know, we uh, Zoom is a little bit more controlled than, say, a public meeting space, but just encourage people to, you know, to express their individual opinions a little hard to clap on Zoom, but, you know, kind of encourage people to just go one at a time. Um, and obviously, if people could use um, civil language, people can express strong views, no problem. Just uh, encourage you not to swear. Uh, and uh, obviously, the department reserves the right to, to manage any of that forcefully, if need be, if anything gets challenging. But we don't expect that today at all. Um, again, if you could just follow our guidance on timing, we want to be fair. So when we do ask you to close at the end of your three minutes, we would ask you to do that pretty quickly. Um, if all worse comes to worse, we can always mute you, but I'd rather not do that. So um, if people just be respectful of the time, that will be most helpful. And again, if people have longer comments uh, in writing, is always very, very welcome um, by the department. Um, and I think also just last point, this is hearing is neither an adversarial proceeding nor a contested case hearing. So people are free to comment or people are not sworn in as a witness. There's no cross-examination of people. This is strictly a public comment period during a, a very kind of standard public hearing um, just to let you know that to distinguish other forms sometimes that New Jersey engages in as required by law. Um, so that is that. And I think uh, just to note, if we want to go to the last slide, we'll also project this at the end. Um, the, um, you know, I, I think written comments, again, are encouraged within roughly 15 days of the close of the last scheduled hearing, which will be in person on December 15th. Uh, and there's the electronic means to submit comments right there. There's also a mailing code and address as well. Um, and we'll also put this screen, we'll put the, Cam, why don't we actually put in chat the, the link there so people have that directly. We'll also put this slide up again at the end. Um, and then again, if there's any members of the press who are wishing to kind of receive a formal statement from the department, you are certainly welcome to reach out to the press office at the department um, if you so, so need to. Um, so um, with that, um, I think we're ready to go. Just a reminder, raise your hand if you want to make a public comment. Please pay attention to the timer. Um, what we do appreciate is if people are speaking, um, what we'd like to do is we'd love to see, it's nice to see you on camera so we can see you. So if you're willing to put your camera on when you speak, that's great. When you're not speaking, having it off saves bandwidth, no problem. Totally fine. Uh, DP will keep their cameras on. They're going to be listening carefully and taking notes um, and they want to be able to see you and, and you see them as well. So you know the department that's, that's, that's listening and paying attention. Um, so with that, um, what I want to do is give the opportunity for first, if there's any elected officials in the room, state or local, um, would encourage you, if you want to make a comment to start, would ask that elected officials only, if they're present first, raise their hand and I'll call on you. Um, and then after that, we'll go to, to everybody. So are there any elected officials on the call today who want to make a public comment? We'll give people a minute to, to identify themselves if so. Looking at my participant list here. Okay, um, seeing none, um, what I'd like to ask you is for anybody who wants to make a public comment, if you could just use the raise hand function, raise your hand. Um, we'll give people a minute to do that. And then I'll begin to call on people um, as we go through the comments this morning. So if people want to just hit the raise hand function um, for those who want to comment, um, what we'll do is we'll then begin to go through that. So um, if people could do that, and again, it's in Zoom, it's in your reactions button at the bottom under a raise hand. It's sometimes a little hard to find. If you can't find it, just shoot, shoot us a, a chat and we'll know to put you in the queue. So let me give people a minute to do that. I see Carrie's hand is up in just a second here. Carrie will go first. Um, let me give people a few minutes to comment. Okay, Carrie, why don't we turn to you? 
Cam will start the timer and care if you could just identify yourself and your affiliation and it's all yours. My name is Kari Martin. I'm the Advocacy Campaign Manager for Clean Ocean Action. Thanks for the opportunity to speak to you today. The ocean is our number one priority, and since 1984, Clean Ocean Action has led campaigns to end ocean dumping and reduce pollution. The urgency to stop climate change is paramount. Over the decades, we have successfully reduced new fossil fuel facilities in the ocean because we know a healthy ocean is the Earth's greatest buffer to reduce climate change. The ocean absorbs 90% of the heat humans emit and 50% of the carbon dioxide emissions as well. We know the ocean and we are shocked at the swift turn against the ocean with massive industrialization, a short-term, inefficient, expensive, and largely untested strategy. To reduce greenhouse gases, it would be faster, cheaper, and a far better investment to reduce energy use. While this hearing is focused on the New Jersey permits for Ocean Wind One, it is essential that DEP assess this project in the context of the massive, unimaginable, industrialization proposed in the Atlantic Ocean in the Northeast. There are 25 projects which exceed over 2.2 million acres, twice the size of Grand Canyon National Park, with 5.7 million more acres planned. This industrialization is unprecedented and will cause ecosystem-wide harm. All of this development will impact nearshore and, and onshore, including areas where scientists recommend retreat due to climate change. There are countless impacts inadequately studied, if at all, Yet these projects are moving at reckless speed. Why are administrations irresponsibly moving forward without practicing basic good governance? COA is calling for a comprehensive, scientific, independent, peer-reviewed pilot study of the true costs and benefits and risks and returns of offshore wind. To date, this is being ignored. Even DEP knows they are unprepared, publicly describing their process as, quote, building the plane as we fly it, end quote, and, quote, learning as we go, end quote, when it comes to offshore wind. These are unacceptable statements to ensure the protection of New Jersey's natural resources. DEP's research and monitoring initiative on offshore wind is critical to good science and governance. However, studies are behind schedule, access to data is limited, the collaboration with other state, regional, and federal and academic efforts is unknown, and yet offshore wind is being fast-tracked. Orsted state permit applications were deemed complete by DEP, yet Orsted's application lacks important details and skirts responsibilities for onshore and offshore and nearshore impacts. The CCMP for the Barnegat Bay Estuary Program, a federal, state, and local protection plan for the Bay, where Orsted plans to run miles of cable, is not mentioned in Orsted's document. In the frantic race for offshore wind power, these facilities are getting a pass, and the ocean, marine life, and coast are getting tossed overboard without due process, good governance, and even basic science. Also, consider the swiftly passed state law, which prohibits towns from requiring rules to protect their onshore resources. Is that environmental stewardship? A true pilot project will ensure protection of the ocean and successful renewable energy development. Clean Ocean Action will be submitting detailed comments. Thanks for letting us speak today. All right, Kari, thank you. And thank you for being right on time. Really appreciate that. And for any names I, mis I mispronounce, please forgive me. I, I'm a frequent skilled mispronouncer. Um, thank you so much. Um, other folks who would like to comment, um, please raise your hand and we will call on you or just let us know in chat if you wish to comment. Other folks who want to comment, um, you know, just raise your hand if you're on the phone. Star nine will also raise your hand via the phone as well. Anybody else who would like to make a public comment this morning? Um, good. John Pitts. John, over to you. If you could just introduce yourself too. Yeah, good morning. My name is John Pitts in Margate, New Jersey. Uh, thanks for affording the time today to offer some comments. Uh, I'm 100% uh, in favor of offshore wind and moving us away from uh, fossil fuels and more renewables. I would like to ensure that the program and project uh, with the offshore wind ensures the ultimate uh, demolition of the windmills when they are out of service, out of life. Uh, it would be critical to be sure that there's something in the program that ensures that the systems are decommissioned demolished and uh, you know when they have reached the end of life the ocean is left as it was before thank you great thank you john appreciate it others who wish to make a public comment um and just raise your hand and we'll call on you all 
I know that someone just joined and we're in the public comment period, a three minute public comment period, a three minute public comment time or length. Um, and if you do want to comment for folks who just joined, you can just raise your hand and we'll call you in the order in which the hand appears. So, any other parties who want to make a public comment at this time in the hearing? We'll give people a minute here. Uh, Michael Dean, over to you. Sorry about that, I was muted. Um, thanks for the opportunity to comment. Um, my name is Michael Dean. I'm a New Jersey resident. I um, Can you hear me? Yes, you sound good. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm a New Jersey resident. I uh, am opposed to the project at hand and the applications that have been submitted. Um, I believe they should be rejected. The uh, I pick up on one, one thing Kari said in that the application has been deemed complete by uh, the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Um, by my count, the, the, on the agenda today are only five of the required um, state permits and authorization applications. Um, there's 13 that are necessary. Uh, I know we're not answering questions here today, but if I could have that on the record, if somebody could follow up, will there be another um, public hearing related to any of those, any other, any of the other individual permits and authorizations that are needed, um, particularly the, the Green Acres diversion, which is one of the biggest ones um, that's not even on the agenda today. So um, that just goes to the my overall comment, which is, the application process for this entire project has been out of order uh, from the beginning. You have um, the process moving forward without major studies having been completed or um, having been put forward from federal agencies like the BOEM, NEPA finalization, NOAA's studies, the National Marine Fisheries Services studies, the, you know, the list goes on and on. I think all of these um, the inadequate record and all of these uncertainties require the Department of Environmental Protection in New Jersey um, to give pause for this and, and get things in order. Um, I understand there are other agencies involved, but the, the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection's role is to protect the environment for the inhabitants of this state. That's human and non-human. And there are goals I understand from, from the, the governing parties and whatnot, and I understand um, how people are appointed to certain positions, but the role of the agency is to protect the environment. And you need to follow, to follow your own stated principles in doing so. And those principles include following the law, using the best available science, which is not clear that anything's been used in a lot of these applications. Um, you need to listen to all sides, and you need to be transparent and honest with the public. That they are all stated principles of the Department of Environmental Protection, and very few of them have been followed throughout this process to date. And I think it's under your uh, control and your mandate to stop this process and put it back on order and get these things lined up. It, as as Kari mentioned, your own admission was building the plane before we can fly it. That's not a way to go about approving applications for a project for this project and for multiple projects as monumental as they are for the future of the state. Me. So um, I ask you to follow your own principles and stated guidelines and uh, and represent the people and the inhabitants of this state in, in coming to uh, a decision. Uh, and if somebody could, could somehow communicate with the public, what's the status of those other um permits and applica applications for permits and authorizations are um that will be helpful thank, thank you michael appreciate it thank you for the comment all right michael thank you uh, other members of the public who would like to comment just raise your hand um, and we'll see if there's other folks who want to comment and michael just noted the specific question which certainly taking down and um, I, I will, you know, will be responded to, and if not today, in the future for sure. Um, Thanks. So, other other folks who want to comment, 
Just raise your hand and we'll call on you. For folks who are just joining, we're in the, the uh, public comment period of the hearing. Uh, we're providing people up to three minutes to comment and all you need to do is raise your hand. Uh, there's a timer that we have that we want you to kind of take a look at to kind of keep track of your three minutes. Um, that's in one of the windows called Blue Sky Timer. And um, again, want to provide opportunity for other folks who want to comment um, today. I think we've had three so far. Other folks who want to comment. Cam, we're waiting to see if anybody else does want to comment. Do you want to just pull up that last slide just so we can remind people of the written comment piece in case people do want to, you know, think, you know, think and contemplate and reflect today and, and prepare written comments later. So let's just put that one slide up if we could. Yep, yeah, sure thing. Okay. So again, um, here, here's the form to, to provide written comments. You know, if you made a verbal comment today, it's absolutely on the record. It's recorded. It will be, you know, it will be responded to. So it's, you don't need to put in a written comment, but if you wish to or want to put in longer written comments, you know, here's the means to do so. Um, the email address, which is also put in chat as well. And then the mailing address as well. Um, so is there anyone else who would like to make a public verbal comment at this time? Okay, New Jersey DP. I'm not seeing other folks wishing to comment right now. Um, so with that, um, and I'll give another second here, but if I don't see other hands, Jennifer, I might turn this back to you um, for a few closing remarks and next steps, and we may have a shorter hearing this morning. Um, so yeah, Jen, I'll just, I'll just yeah. wait. I was Sorry. Just wait like another another couple of seconds, and if nothing, yep, I'll just give my closing. Sounds good. Okay, looks like folks are done. All right, so um, we appreciate you taking the time to provide comments today um, and to listen into this hearing. The information presented at the hearing is going to be reviewed and considered by the department prior to us rendering a decision on the permit application. The opportunity to provide written comments will remain open until December 30th, 2022, which is 15 days from the date of the last scheduled public hearing on December 15th. Should you think of additional comments or concerns after the close of this hearing, you may submit your comments electronically through the department's offshore wind webpage or in writing by Friday, December 30th, 2022, addressed to Janet Stewart, Bureau Chief of the NJDEP's Division of Land Resource Protection, Bureau of Coastal Permitting. Once again, thank you all for attending. Um, this hearing is now closed. Great, thank you, Jennifer. And just all you know, Janet is on and listening. So there's a, there's a person behind the name and she's right here. So um, Jennifer, thank you. Thank you all for attending. We have another public hearing, I believe next um, Monday evening and then another one um, in person um, later next week as well. So thank you for attending, appreciate the comments. Um, and um, the, the department will circle back in due time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks.